Hi, today I'm on top of the Malvern Hills in Worcestershire and this has become a regular spot now for snow buntings. Very small numbers, just one or two, and they're usually very close to the beacon behind me on Beacon Hill. But as you can see, it's a bit foggy. So I've just got to wait, wait for the fog to clear a bit. When I first started to climb up the hill, it was clear on the tops and then it fogged over, but the chances are you won't have to wait very long for it to clear again. Hopefully you can see the sun has broken through, we've lost the fog. Snow buntings. As far as I know, this year has only one snow bunting been here, and if you're looking for it, this is the place to stand. It's usually very close to, to this point. And if not close to the beacon itself, it's no more than 30 metres to the south or north along the ridge. And you won't be disturbing the bird, it's oblivious to people. It comes within a few feet of you. The problem you've got is this is a very popular place. That bird will be walking about with 50 other people around here. The only thing it doesn't like is dogs. As soon as it sees a dog, it's off. But people just not bothered at all, which is very common for snow buntings. But I haven't found it yet. While I'm waiting for the snow bunting, there's lots of meadow pipits around and they're not approachable. I'm not getting close to them, but there's one skylark who's just as tame as the snow bunting. But it's unusual for skylarks. They're not normally approachable like this. Everything is taken with the OM-1 camera and the 150 to 400 mm lens, but the lighting was just lovely, a nice soft light. I don't like strong sunlight a lot of the time and the lighting here was just perfect. Here the bird is just hidden in the grass a little bit too much, but then he moved forward into the open. And he spent a good 10 minutes sitting on this clump of grass. The snow bunting did show up. It wasn't a great poser. You can see it's not in a good position there. It's low down, a little bit better. But most of the time it was just very actively feeding looking for seeds now this is a better pose he's gone a little bit more upright but on the whole he was just feeding and very fast moving now all the video clips are taken at 60 frames per second 4k but this clip is being shown at normal speed and to me it's too jerky so this second clip this is now slowed down, this is half speed. And to me, this looks more natural. This is the way I visualize a snow bunting as moving. The tripod I'm using is my lighter Manfrotto because I've had to climb up the hill. I don't want to carry my heavier tripod. Now, unfortunately, the snow bunting spent a lot of time in this habitat. And photographically, it's not the best place for him to be. It's very difficult to take nice pictures when he's just in long grass. But the feeding was clearly very good. Lots of seeds available. I've replaced my Manfrotto head that was stolen, so I've got a 503 on here. Nowhere near as good as the Miller head, but when you've got to climb up a hill like this, I do tend to bring the lighter tripod, the lighter head. And then I just have to make good use of the, the bungee rope on the pan handle, for when I want to pan, I pull on the bungee. Don't get vibration from my hand then. I think it's time to pack up. The sun is getting very low in the sky. The light is very weak now. I've stayed till the end because I was hoping all the dog walkers would disappear. The bird is very tolerant of people, but they just don't like dogs. 
The snow bunting didn't stay around too long and I never really got good pictures of it. It never went onto the rocky outcrops where I wanted it to be. Spent too much time in the long grass. So I'll just show you my new Buteo hide. I mentioned before that when my car was stolen I lost some equipment, tripods and binoculars and my bird hide. Well, it was a Buteo single person hide and Buteo from the Netherlands are very kindly sent me another one free of charge. I think they have made quite a few sales because of my YouTube channel mentioning to them, but it's very good of them. I also got sent money by the way as well. People sent me checks and no email address to be able to reply to them or postal address so I'm thanking you now, very very kind of you. I was also given the loan of a Satchler tripod with a proper video head on it, very expensive video head to keep me going until I get my own stuff sorted out. But anyway, I'll show you the hide. I like hide work, I always have done. I've had this hide up on this marsh twice this morning for 90 minutes each session trying to do jack snipe. There's jack snipe out there but getting them to come out in the open very difficult. It's one of the most difficult British birds to get really good pictures of. I've only succeeded once previously. But I'll show you the hide. I've always enjoyed hide work. I like sitting in hides. It's like being a fisherman sitting by the side of the river. I don't find it boring. I just like being in there and you see all sorts of wildlife that you didn't know was there. What I like about these beauty of hides is they pop up so quickly and you can put them down so quickly as well. This one's got quite a kick in it so you've got to be a bit careful as you open it. Quite powerful. There we go. But it's just so quick to put it up. This is the front. Now when it's windy you do have to put tent pegs in. There's loopholes on the bottom of here and it comes with guy ropes as well. So if it's very windy you put the guy ropes and attach them to here. But most of the time I don't have to bother. This spring steel that's in here never distorted on my previous one and there can't be many people that put that Buteo hide up and down as often as I did. It was noticeable it wasn't as stiff as this. Now whether that's because I put it up and down so often or whether they've made the, the steel stiffer than it used to be, I don't know. But it certainly has quite a kick in it when you when you put it up. But it's very very stable. It's not, it's not here because the floor is not uh, even. Um, but it doesn't normally in most conditions need the tent pegs in it. At the front here you've got an aperture with netting that's normally where I'm photographing from. You can buy it with a nursing sleeve. I used to use nursing sleeves a lot 50 years ago when I did a lot of nest photography but that's, you don't do that anymore so I would never want the nursing sleeve. I'd always want it with the scrimming so you can see what's going on down the side of the lens. Lots of peepholes to be looking out of and a low aperture down here as well when you want the low angles. Now there's different sized apertures on the other side of it. So here we've got a much larger one. If I'm doing birds in flight I'd have the hide facing this way and I can just hang some scrimming off the top here as well. It's all velcroed into place and then there's a smaller aperture. Oh no that's, that's the door. Um, I often don't use the door either, I just sit down on my stool and I pull the hide over the top of me. But when you put the tent pegs in, then obviously you've got to use the door. And then the other side has a much smaller aperture. Now I've gone for the green coloured one this time. Last time I had the autumn coloured hide. From the bird's point of view, the colour doesn't matter. They're not bothered. You're just hiding the human shape. But it's nice to have it camouflaged so that people don't notice you so much. There is a footpath that goes across the top of this marsh and it'd be nice if people just don't notice you. They're not aware that you're there. Now the hard part with these hides, quite often with pop-up hides, is putting them down again. But I find this very easy to do. So I'll just demonstrate that. First of all, you fold it flat. And then you've got to have it the right way up, the top at the top and the bottom at the bottom. And you can put your foot on it. You don't have to, but you can put your foot on it to stop it slipping. But then you just bend it to about that degree. It's not precise, but roughly you bend it like that. And then you just spin it. Now I haven't failed to do this first time for several years. It just always works first time for me. I 
and that's it. I was expecting to fail then because I was telling you how I never fail but uh, it's just so easy to put up and so easy to take back down again. So I'm going to try the hide again a little bit further over here this will be the third time today and over the last 12 months probably about the fifth day that I've tried this and haven't succeeded yet I do have pictures of Jack Snipe but not from here I'll show you just a couple of those thanks for watching